Section 3.2, saturated solutions and solubility. So as a solid dissolves, a solution forms. So if you have a solid here, and so this is sodium chloride, this is table salt, and you've got it in water. Okay, so I have oxygen, hydrogen here as a water molecule. The water molecule comes and grabs one of the particles because they're charged. So you've got a section of the water molecule that's positive, the, the hydrogens, the little, the little blue guys here, and then the red oxygen is negative. And so the negative wants to surround the little purple, um, in this case, sodiums. The white uh, or blue hydrogens are going to want to completely surround the chlorines. And so you have these guys here, which are solvated. Okay, there's, so, there's a solution made where they're pulling it out of solution. So you've got a sodium here, and then here you've got a chlorine. And you can see the different sides of the water molecule will surround the either positive or negative uh, ion. Well, so if you are going to make a solute, okay, so you have a solute and a solvent, and it makes a solution, you can go backwards. You can go from a solution. If any of these particles touch the crystal again, it's going to reattach to the crystal, and the sol and the solution is just going to uh, to release that particle that it's holding. So you could go back. You could say um, that a solution. I'll just make the arrow go this way. A solution will result in a solute plus a solvent. Okay. So if you go to the right, this is called dissolving or solvation. Okay, so let's just put it as solvation. So it's dissolving, it's making a solution. If you go to the right, it's called crystallization. And these guys are in equilibrium with each other. So as soon as all of the, all of the water molecules are surrounding everything that, to where they're all full, all of them are occupied, then the, any time that the crystals retouch, uh, you've got some leftover water that can then grab a new crystal, and so you're making, you are making solution at the same rate that you are recrystallizing and making some salt. So what's going to happen is, depending upon the amount of solution you've got, the amount of, in this case, water that you have, you can only grab a certain amount of the solute, because as soon as they're completely occupied, you can't grab any more solute. solute. So if I were to put some table salt in some water, it may dissolve. If I add more table salt, it may still dissolve. But eventually I'm going to add enough table salt that the salt just falls to the bottom because every molecule of water is busy surrounding molecules that have dissolved already. And then if those uh, touch and you end up with some, uh, some uh, water molecules that aren't doing anything, they will in turn then grab another molecule and the rates of going to crystal and rates of going to uh, solution are going to be equal to each other. In which case, you're going to end up with a constant amount of, say, undissolved salt on the bottom. So the solubility, the solubility is the amount of solute required to form a saturated solution. Okay, so a saturated solution is when every water molecule is completely busy surrounding one of the ions. So in a saturated solution, the solvent is holding as much solute as possible at that temperature. Now you know if you were to change the temperature of the water, you may change the solubility. So if you were to put sugar in cold water, you could grab a little bit, it would make that sweet. You could, you could put sugar in, say, iced tea, and it would hold a little bit of sugar. But if you were to put it in hot tea, it would hold a lot more sugar. So the temperature does affect um, how much. So uh, the temperature is important with determining how much is soluble. It's soluble at a certain temperature. It's more soluble at another temperature. And every amount of solvent and solute uh, 
uh, relationship is going to be different. So water holds a certain amount of salt, it holds a different amount of something else. As I said in the last slide, this is always in equilibrium. So the, the uh, salt crystal here is dissolving and being solvated or hydrated around the water is surrounding it, each breaking it apart. And at any time that it touches, it can reestablish itself with the crystal. So eventually when it stops dissolving, okay, and you have whatever you have in the bottom of the jar, at that point, it's in dynamic. This is called dynamic equilibrium because it's doing it at the same rate. You are breaking apart at the same rate that you're joining back up. And so if that, those rates are the same, then you'll never change the amount. The amount of stuff at the bottom of the jar is constantly being dissolved and recrystallized, but the same amount is staying in the bottom of the jar. You don't, you don't uh, change the amount that's dissolved. You're just, uh, you're just dissolving and recrystallizing at the same rate. So if you have leftover water in this case, or any kind of solvent, then it can, you could dissolve more stuff in it. If it's unsaturated, then there's more water to grab crystals. So as long as you've got water hanging out ready to d dissolve something, you could put more in and it would dissolve it. At the point when all the water is busy or occupied surrounding something, at that point it's saturated and if you were to add more, it would just fall to the bottom. We also saw that if you were to raise the temperature, you could surround more at that temperature. So even the amount of water molecules at a, at a higher temperature could surround more of the solute molecules. Uh, at a colder temperature, usually you dissolve less. Now this is awesome. Supersaturated solutions. First of all, that's fun to say, supersaturated solutions. But a supersaturated solution means that you are actually dissolving more than you should be able to. So you're using the temperature as a trick. If you know that cold water only dissolves a certain amount of sugar in your iced tea, but hot water dissolves more sugar in your iced tea. If you want really sweet tea, okay, let's say your wife is from Memphis like mine is, and you make sweet tea because that's what Southern people do, then what you do is you don't make cold water and put sugar in it because it would never be sweet. What you do is you make hot tea and then you put the sugar in it and you really carefully cool that tea. You cool it and you don't bother the pitcher and you let it cool very, very slowly and when it does, it's holding on to lots of sugar even though it's cold water. This is called a super saturated solution. It's more than saturated. Saturated means at that temperature, all the water molecules are busy. If you have a super saturated at that temperature, it's actually holding more than it should. Now, what happens is if, you know, if you have normally some kind of an ionic particle that's dissolved, say salt water, you could make a super saturated salt water solution. If you put salt in very hot water and keep putting salt until you can't have, have any more salt, then you cool the water very slowly it'll still hold on to all that salt. You're not, it won't settle down to the bottom. It won't come out of solution. But the tiniest little disturbance of that jar, and it will all at once, usually within a split second, all ionize, all crystallize or come out of solution all at once. Normally you need a little type of a seed crystal. Okay, so let's say that I've got a super saturated solution of some of some ion, ionic compound dissolved in, say, water. Okay, and it, you made it really hot, you dissolved a lot of it in, more than what it would do at cold, and then you really carefully uh, uh, cool it off, and now it's holding on to more than you can. If you were to put a tiny little crystal of that stuff that's dissolved and just drop it in the water, immediately all of the stuff that's, that's just barely holding on will crystallize with that seed and it will all come out of solution at once. And so it can happen very, very fast. This is fun to watch.